Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Yusuf Shakil and you are watching CSS tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn about CSS width and height property. So let's get started. All right guys, so I've opened brackets and now I'll go ahead and create a new file and I'll save this as dimensions.html and I'll write the following HTML code. So we have the doc type HTML, opening and closing HTML tag we have the opening and closing head tag and we have set the title for this page to dimensions dash width and height. Now inside the CSS folder, we let us create a new file and save it as dimensions.css. So back to our HTML file, inside the head, let us go ahead and include this dimension.css file which is inside the CSS folder. So for that we'll write link and we'll set the rel to stylesheet and href to css slash dimension dot css. And now let us go ahead and open this in live preview. All right, let us begin our journey by talking about the width and height property. We use the width and height property to set the dimension of an element. By default, the width and height property is set to auto for any element. That is, it will take up the width depending on its content. If it is a block element, it will take up the entire width. If it's an inline element, then it will take up the width depending on its content. And its height is similarly based on content. Now we can define our own width and height for the given element by setting its width and height property. So for example, let's say we have a div inside the body and let's give this div an ID sample dash div one. And since divs are block elements, so you can see this blue line stretching from left to right. That is, it is taking up the entire width. And let's say inside this div, we have a paragraph, hello world. And now let's say we want to change the width of this div having ID sample dash div one to let's say 200 pixels. So inside our CSS file, we'll write hash sample dash div one hash because we are targeting the ID and and we'll set the width to let's say 200 pixels. And now if you look at the output, you'll see this rectangle highlighted in blue is now reduced to 200 pixels. Earlier it was taking up the entire width. Now it is only 200 pixels. Similarly, we can increase or decrease its height using the height property. So by default, the height is set to auto, but Let's say we want to change the height of this div to let's say 48 pixels. So now if you look at the output, you can see this div having ID sample dash div one is now having height of 48 pixels and width of 200 pixels. Similarly, we can set the width and height in terms of percentage. So Let's get back to our HTML file and this time let us create another div and give this div an ID sample dash div two. And inside this div, let us create another paragraph and set it to happy. And now we go back to our CSS file and this time we'll write hash sample dash div two. And this time let us set the width of this div to 50% and its height to let's say 20%. So width 50% and 
and height 20 percent so now if we look at the output we can see this blue which is highlighting this div having id sample dash div 2 now the width of this div is 50 percent and its height is 20 percent and this is with respect to the browser so if we increase the width of the browser you can see the width of the div is increasing so now this is the 50 percent of this div having id sample dash div 2 so this is now 50 percent with respect to the browser so now if we reduce the width of the browser this will become the new 50 percent so if you want to make your container responsive that is if you want the container to adjust its size as we increase or decrease the browser size you can use percentage instead of pixels another property related to width and height is the min width and min height it is used to set the minimum width and height of the element so for example let's say we have another div and it has an id sample dash div 3 and let's say it has a paragraph this is a sample paragraph and now let's say we want to set the minimum width of this div having id sample dash div 3 to let's say 200 pixels and let's say we want to set the minimum height of this div to let's say 40 pixels so inside our css file we'll write sample dash div 3 and we'll write min width and we want to set it to 200 pixels and we'll write min height and we want to set it to let's say 40 pixels so this is the minimum width and minimum height for this div and now if we increase the content of this div the height will increase so let's say we go back to our html and let's say we write some extra text so we have a lengthy paragraph and you can see okay so i need a full stop okay so you can see inside our css we have set the minimum height to 40 pixels and as we have started to add more text to this div its height has increased so as we keep on adding extra text to it its height will increase and if we remove text from this paragraph the height of this div will reduce or will decrease but the height of this div will not go below 40 pixels because we have set the minimum height for this div to 40 pixels another property related to width and height is the max width and max height we use these two properties to define the maximum width and maximum height for a given element. So let's say we have a div inside our HTML file. And this time we have an ID sample dash div4. And inside this, let's say we have a paragraph. Or oh, let me just copy this paragraph. So we have a div having ID sample dash div 4 and it has a paragraph or let's say another paragraph. So this div has two paragraphs. And now let's 
set the max width and max height for this div 4. So inside our CSS file, we'll write hash sample dash div 4 and we'll set the max width to let's say 50%. So now you can see the width of this div that is sample dash div 4 is now set to 50% and 50% that is with respect to the width of the browser. And let's set the max height to let's say 200 pixels. So if we look at the output, we can see that the width for this div having ID sample dash div 4 is set to 50% and the height is set to 200 pixels. Now there is a problem. As you can see at the bottom, we have set the max height for this div to 200 pixels but the content of this div is overflowing. So in order to make the content stay inside this div, having max width and max height, 50% and 200 pixels respectively. And in order to prevent this overflow, we'll use overflow dash Y. And we'll set the value of this property to scroll. We will learn more about overflow in the overflow tutorial. So don't worry. What we are trying to say by writing this overflow dash Y to scroll is that if the content of this div is more than the max height, then it will not overflow out of this div. Rather it will stay inside and its content will now become scrollable. So we can scroll up and down and the content is now inside the div and it is not flowing out of the div. So that is the use of overflow dash Y scroll where Y is from top to bottom and X is from left to right. So it is like an X axis and Y axis. So your origin is at the top left and your X axis is from top left going all the way to top right. And your Y axis starts from top left and goes all the way down to bottom left. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'll post the tutorial notes on my website, tyclassroom.com. The link will be in the description. And all the code that we are writing in this tutorial series, I'll put them in my GitHub repository. The link will be in the description, so feel free to check that out. And if you find this video interesting, then please give this video a like and please subscribe my channel. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And like always, stay happy and keep smiling. Bye.